and welcome to lesson two which is on biotechnology. Now bio means life or living. You know that's botany, biology. All of those study uh, living things. Biographies are stories about living people. So when we look at biotechnology we're looking at how technology is used with living things. Now, probably out of all the areas that we're going to look at, this one really could provoke the most conflict and the most disagreement among people. Because when you start messing around with people and with their DNAs and, and things like that, with animals and plants, some people get real upset. And they get upset on religious grounds or they get upset on moral grounds or ethical grounds. And so the, we not only have the development of biotechnology, but we've got to argue or fight with or, you know, hammer with those people who want to stand in the way of progress of science. And the one area that probably stands out the most is cloning. People just, some people just have a real hard time with the fact that we clone things. Now, the Human Genome Project uh, has a website, it's uh, a US government website, that talks about, about this topic. And they list under cloning three areas of cloning that are worth considering. The first is DNA cloning. DNA cloning is just simply fixing DNA. Sometimes, you know, they're, they're studying how they can fix somebody's DNA. Some people may have a DNA that, that has a segment that's prone to cancer or, or maybe prone to addiction. And they're trying to find out how they can fix that DNA and pull that part out. Now, not many people have a problem with that part of cloning. But we start getting into things like reproductive cloning. And this is where cloning of animals comes in. Some people get real upset with that. There are some people who don't like it. Reproductive cloning is where they go in and they transfer the nucleus of a cell from an adult into an egg that has had its nucleus removed. So you end up then with a new creature that has the DNA of an existing creature. Now, as we've moved down the list, we get down to the last one, you find that, that the religious and ethical and moral people, you know, they get, as we move down, they get a little bit more upset because we get down here therapeutic uh, cloning and that's where we're tar talking about harvesting stem cells for the treatment of disease. Now not all stem cells have to come from an embryo, but we know that by harvesting stem cells from somewhere, scientists are able to work on diseases like Parkinson's and uh, leukemia. And, and some of these diseases that, that we just don't have some treatment response that we can use. Now, in this area, I want, I want to talk a little bit about a, about a couple back in 1988. Their name was Mary and Abe Alaya. They had a daughter who was diagnosed with a disease. And here's what they did to deal with that. So you see, not all biotechnology is bad because the use of biotechnology helped save this young girl's life. In 1988, Anissa Ayala was diagnosed with chronic myelogenous leukemia. She was a 16-year-old girl who was facing a death sentence because there was no suitable bone marrow uh, transplant available for her. Her parents, Mary and Abe, 
worried about their daughter Anissa, decided that the best option for them would be to conceive another child. There was only a one in four chance that this child could be a donor, and there was a remote possibility that this child would not be born and be old enough to be a transplant, bone marrow transplant donor before Anissa was dead. But regardless, they did conceive, and in 1990, Marissa was born. And on June 4, 1991, Anissa received a bone marrow transplant from her baby sister. In 2011, they celebrated the 20th anniversary of the transplant. The sisters at that time were 39 and 21. When asked what she thought about what her parents did, Marissa said she was grateful that they did that and she was very pleased that she was able to save the life of her big sister. Now another area that we look at in this lesson is genetically modified foods. Again, an area that some people have a moral or ethical or religious uh, issue with. Now, in genetically modified foods, what they're doing is they're taking and modifying these foods somehow genetically to improve on them. Now, there are really four areas where, where we see genetically modified foods. First is crops, then animals, and then there's the environment and society as a whole. Looking at crops, by going in and, and using genetic modification, they're able to enhance the tastes of some foods. Uh, they're able to reduce the time for maturation. You know, this is an important thing. If, if we can find ways to shorten the time it takes from when the seed is planted to when the crop is harvested, we can increase our yields, have more food available. And another thing is, is just simply to uh, uh, increase the yield and, uh, and build resistance. Now, that's the same thing that's true when we look at GM with animals. We're looking at increasing the yield, increasing the amount of beef that you can get from a cow or pork from a pig. Um, and the resistance that they have to diseases so that they're not affected by a lot of diseases. Now the third area where GM is important is in the environment. Well, How does that affect the environment? Well, how about waste management? You know, we pile trash on top of trash on top of trash and trying to find ways to modify that stuff we put in the trash will minimize it. Also, gathering animal waste. You know, there are companies now, and they make a lot of money going around and, and picking up the waste at feedlots. And this waste is taken, and it's sanitized, and it's spread on crops. It's the, one of the best fertilizers you can get, and the price is right and it's recycling. Who can be against that? Anyway, by, by developing better waste man management programs, it helps the environment. Now, the fourth area that's affected by, by GM is society. By having an application for GM on crops and animals, we're able to increase the amount of food that's available for people. So as you, as you read this, this chapter and study this lesson, pay attention to, to those areas, and, and if you have an issue with those areas, that's okay. Everyone has a right to their opinion. And, and no one is saying that your opinion might be wrong. But just have an open mind when you examine it and see if there's some ways that that those things can be used so that ultimately they benefit society and make this a better place to live and allow us
to feed those parts of the world and cure those places in the world who suffer from hunger and disease. So until next time, let me say, see ya. <laughs>